Life cycle assessment is a quantitative tool to evaluate the environmental impacts of a product, process or service. It includes a cradle-to-grave approach that includes all the steps in the production, recycling, use, waste treatment and final disposal of a process. Looking at this graphically, we can consider a single process as this blue block. Life cycle assessment will look at the inputs from the left, the outputs on the right and the waste represented by the red arrow going upwards. Because we consider from cradle to grave, the inputs considered are raw materials which come from the earth, the output is the product of interest, and waste includes all of solids, liquids and gases. Since most inputs into processes are not directly from the earth, we need to include the transformation of intermediates into our process. We continue back as far as we need to go, until the inputs to the system are unprocessed raw materials. From all these processes, we also need to include solid, liquid and gaseous wastes. It was mentioned that recycling was included in the life cycle assessment. On the bottom right, we have now included a loopback process for recycling. This could be conventional recycling, wastewater treatment or any other system where material is returned for reuse. All of this would now form a cradle-to-grave system which we can analyse. However, most systems are not as simple as this. One of the boxes will be some form of energy, most likely electricity. And because every process needs electricity, we no longer have a linear system, but we have electricity feeding into each and every block where it is needed. And we will not only recycle in the process producing the final product, but in many of the other units as well. Some of this recycling will lead back to the same box, but others may loop back to processes a few steps away. While this may look like a relatively complicated diagram, in most life cycle assessment cases, the number of processes and interlinking units can run into the thousands. While the ultimate output of a life cycle assessment is going to be a set of environmental indicators, there may be various reasons why we would want to do an LCA. These may be simple communications about environmental aspects. It may be to look at product or process design or policies. It could be for legal or compliance reasons. Or it may be to determine environmentally friendly alternatives. As already mentioned, one reason to use LCA is because of its quantitative aspect. The use of numbers to support findings means that emotion should be removed from what can often be emotional subjects. It is also possible to look at individual aspects of a full system, from transportation or manufacture, and make decisions around individual parts of the whole. To ensure quality is controlled in an LCA, the International Standards Organization has developed several standards in the ISO 14000 series for environmental management. Amongst these standards are ones for life cycle assessment, water footprinting, greenhouse gas management, and more. To complete an LCA, the ISO 14040 standard Environmental Management Life Cycle Assessment Principles and Framework describes how an LCA should be undertaken. This includes the four stages of goal and scope definition, inventory analysis, and impact assessment. The final interpretation phase runs parallel to these as a means to question and understand processes and results throughout. The goal and scope is the stage where the scene is set and shows what it is that needs to be done. This stage presents the assumptions on how the LCA is to be undertaken. The inventory analysis is where a flow sheet of the process is produced and material flows are calculated for the full cradle-to-grave system. All these values are then scaled against the functional unit, which is a reference value for the final output of interest. The full list of materials is called the inventory table. From the inventory table, the impact assessment converts thousands of mass values into meaningful numbers on environmental impacts. The categories of interest could include, amongst others, global warming, acidification, toxicities, ozone depletion, and eutrophication. Graphically, we can present this in a simplified manner. The values from the inventory table are classified into environmental burdens such as global warming, acidification, eutrophication, and more. In each impact category, the chemicals are converted using equivalency factors, so that impacts are reported as a single chemical impact. Typically, these scores, midpoint indicators, are what many LCAs report. It is possible to add an extra step to produce another set of indicators, endpoint indicators, converting chemical impacts to human health effects.